So it seems like every time I post a picture of a knife edge close up, I get two questions. The first one is, what am I filming this with? And the second one is, what does a mirror edge look like? Let's find out. I'm just gonna go through the standard grit progression, the 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 5,000 grit, and that'll be really close to a mirror edge. We'll see what that looks like, and then we will uh, move on to an even finer stone if we need. I start off on the 1,000 grit Shapton Korumaku. Highly recommend this stone, by the way. It is one of, if not my favorite, sharpening stone and a tremendous value as well. Links in the description. I don't spend too much time here since the knife is already apexed from a 400 grit diamond stone, so all I'm doing is refining the scratch pattern. Next onto the 1500 grit Shapton ceramic. Honestly, this stone isn't really necessary, but I just got it, so I wanted to try it out. Now you can jump right from the 1000 to the 2000, no problem. And that's exactly where I go next, the 2000. The 2000 is a must-have stone in my opinion. It's difficult to jump right from the 1000 to the 5000 since the 5000 is more of a polishing stone. So the 2000 really does shorten the time spent on the 5000, polishing out those scratches. On to the 5000, and this is where we start to see some shine. I'd call it a cloudy shine. Now this didn't give me quite the mirror I was hoping for, so I had to use a Norton 8000 grit. My camera died and I didn't get any footage of sharpening on the Norton, but here you can see it on the table as I mess around cutting some paper towels. This thing is stupid sharp. I really should use a nicer knife for these YouTube videos, but we aren't looking at the rust spots. Pay no attention to those. Just looking at the apex. In all fairness, this was a test blade I made testing A2 tool steel and the corrosion resistance. At least that's what I tell myself. And here's the first image. Not as close as we can get, not even close. But I wanted to show you that you can see the mirror and you can start to see some of the scratches. These larger scratches that you are seeing, I believe are from a contaminated strop. Since I did strop this on a one micron. You can't see these scratches with the naked eye, unless your eyes are better than mine, but after experimenting, I did find them to be present after stropping and not before. So I'm showing you this so that you make sure to store your strops in a protected environment and don't just throw them in a drawer with a bunch of rusty knives. And now I'm about to show you the greatest image that I've ever captured. I'm serious. This is it, a mirror edge and a single strand of hair. Yeah, my life's work right here. It did take a lot of playing around to get this image on my setup and some counterintuitive camera settings, but there it is. You can see just how small those scratches are since the Shapton 5000 leaves an approximate three micron scratch pattern and an 8000 grit is approximately 1.8 micron. Now I'm just guessing here, I'm giving it the old hillbilly guess, but that strand of hair is probably about 75 microns across. And then here is probably the worst photo I ever took, just to give you some perspective. And one more time back outside to show you that it is indeed a pretty good mirror polish. It might not be perfect. Okay, I'm not the best mirror polisher in the world, and we probably could have refined this a little bit more once I get the Shapton 12,000 and then maybe the 30,000. We'll do this video again. It's actually pretty difficult to whittle hair when it gets this sharp. You have to angle the blade very slowly up into the hair Duh. or it will just chop it right off. Sometimes when it's so sharp like this, it'll just blaze right through the hair. There we go. It's, it's taking little pieces off. Ah, just cuts it. Now, a lot of people are asking, what do I use to film this and capture these amazing images? Well, this is the boring part of the video. As if analyzing scratches on a piece of metal isn't boring enough. So I'm filming on my phone here. Excuse the image quality, but this is basically what I'm using to film. This is a Sony A6400. I film in 4K. Uh, the ultra close-ups that you see, I actually take pictures of, and that's 24.1 megapixel or something like that. The lens, the most important part, this is a Venus Optics Laua 25 millimeter f2.8 and it is a 2.5 to 5x macro lens 
and when this thing is fully zoomed in, your focus plane or the distance between what is in focus and what is out of focus is like less than a millimeter. So you also have this uh, focus helper thing here. This lens does not have a uh, manual focus on it. The only way to focus it is to literally move the camera, the entire thing back and forth. And so you need this super fine micro adjustment to be able to focus. And even this isn't really fine enough, but we make it work. Actually, it's so difficult to focus this, focus this that even if you uh, have this in focus and you just bump the camera like that, it's enough to bump it out of focus again. So it's kind of difficult to use. I don't know how you'd ever use this handheld, but people do. You also might be asking, how the heck do you get so close up only using a 5 X lens. All right, I do a really terrible job of explaining this here, but the 5X doesn't mean anything to your naked eye. The 5X is in reference to how big the image is displayed on your camera sensor. And cameras have all different size sensors, but a smaller sensor means a larger image and a larger sensor means a smaller final image. So basically it means nothing to 99% of the people watching this. My precious. I'm just going to go through the standard, the, oh boy, I mixed up. Fifteen hundred. Cut paper. There's a very clear image of S110V. <laughs> this is uh, right out of the pocket, not even cleaned up. There we go. Could be from the same company, right? It does not, um, it, it does not have a... Just bring this, this right in here. Well, Put this down. Actually, this is probably gonna fall over. Because I'm gonna be sharpening fast. Oh, we'll just turn the side this here. You can see that. Go! Give you a much better working edge. The edge will probably last longer, too. Not scientifically proven, but you get the idea. If you happen to see this, you're the best subscriber ever, because I know you're a subscriber. And if you aren't, hit the subscribe button. Also say, I don't know, I love monkeys down in the comments, but don't tell anybody why you love monkeys. Is that weird?